What's going on, Wastelanders? Stu Padasso here for Draco Invictus, and it is time for our monthly tour. It is our second month tour here, our eight-week tour, as it were. And today, I'm not going to give you a tour of my entire settlement. You've seen all of that. I'm going to give you a tour of the factory, a proper tour. So let's get to it right now. All right, now that we got Draco's silly little thing out of the way, we'll get to this all right proper. Okay, so I'm going to explain all of this. It's actually not that complicated. There's a lot more complicated crap going on behind these walls and under this ground and all that stuff, but we won't get to that. So basically, when you come in, you trip on this little trip wire here, and it turns just these couple lights on. This light up in here this light and this light and it turns it gives power to these lights here they come on in phases it'd be cool if you heard the chunk ka chunk ka chunk but uh but i wasn't about to do all them sound effects like that so uh you'll just have to deal with mine so okay we got our lights on and you can run this place with or without lights. Nothing is tied to the lights. I originally had everything tied to this laser tripwire, but I was in here doing a quality check, and damn dog meat come wandering through the door, and all of a sudden all my lights started going off, and then they'd come back on, and then the belts had shut. It was a hot mess. So I, I disconnected the main power from that tripwire so that uh, this system will run, whether that tripwire is on or off. All right, so we've got two walls of switches over here we'll start with this wall because this one says main that's the most important this is like the emergency shut off you flip this switch when it's on and the whole system shuts off so let's go ahead and turn it on and now we've got power to our sort switch now why do i have the sort before the pull right it, it seems like you'd want the pull before the sort here's the deal you want to turn on the belts for the sorter before you start pulling stuff out of that steamer trunk over there. See, we got all kinds of stuff in there. But if this starts running and stuff goes up there, it's all just going to pile up there on the sorter and not go anywhere. So you want to turn the sorter on first before you provide power to the puller. So let's go ahead and, and notice there's no red light. You can't even turn the puller on without having the sorter. Now we've got a red light there. And our little green light comes on. There it is, right over there. As a matter of fact, let's turn off these lights. I know it's daylight out, but there. At least you can see the green light over there. It's on. That means that our sorter's got power. Okay. Now we'll turn on our puller. Or we would turn on the puller, and it would start pulling stuff out of this chest. And then go up over there. So let's get that going, and then we'll talk about this wall in a second. And this switch here is basically just a logic gate it's an and logic gate it's 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 the easiest of all the gates basically how an and logic gate works says all of your inputs need to have power for this to work so this and this need to have be on to send power to this that's how that works that's how an and works it's this and this and there's ors so this or this you know but we're just using the end i don't want to confuse you no more all right so let's get our puller turned on so we can start seeing this thing all of this switches other than delivery is all upstairs so we'll focus on that in a second let's come over here and we'll see that it's starting to pull stuff out and basically we're looking for four things in this ammunition factory we are looking for a copper fertilizer lead and steel so if our items have any of those things, it goes down this ramp, just like these gas canisters here. They got steel in them, right? If it doesn't have those things, then it goes down that ramp. And then this box over here, oh, what are you doing out here? This box actually stores stuff in the workshop. See, it's conveyor workshop storage. So that means that 
we put stuff in the chest and now it ends up in the workshop so that we can use it for other things. But we don't break it down because we may want to decorate with a fancy hairbrush or decorate with an empty coolant or whatever else we might want to. But this stuff, we're breaking down because we want the raw components. And it's going to start saving stuff up in here until it has enough to kick everything out. So we'll just let it continue to run. Make sure nothing's on the floor. It typically does a pretty good job of it. You gonna start working or what? You've obviously got power, your belt's moving. There's something in there. It's probably this makeshift battery that's tying something up. Let's let's take out that battery. No. Nope. What could it possibly be? Shit, I don't know. Got some broken light bulbs going in there. Come on, start kicking out some stuff. These people don't have all day. I was going to say, it may be waiting for a certain amount, but I don't think that it works like that. What do we got coming up here? Oh, we got bags of fertilizer. Definitely need fertilizer. Fertilizer is the one resource that you need to make pretty much any ammo type because they use that in, in place of uh, gunpowder. I don't know what the hell's going on with that thing. It's not going a chunk, a chunk. It's supposed to be. We may have to take a look at this real quick. Man, I'm sorry to interrupt tour like this, but if the factory ain't working, it ain't much of a tour, is it? We'll get it all sorted out, don't you worry about it. See, why? Why ain't that snapping? Oh, there it goes. See? Just had to give it a little shake. Yeah, now it's kicking out all kinds of stuff. It's processing all that stuff. Okay, so then these go up this this lift here, and then they end up on that belt. And they're going along, going along, going along. Matter of fact, let's go upstairs right now. I say upstairs, but we got us an elevator. See, by putting in an elevator, not stairs, because these settlers, I don't know, maybe they're scared of elevators or something, but they will not use them. So then you'll see as the resources start coming in, you'll see the little blue light start flashing. See it? Blue light flashing over there. Every time something's about to drop into that hopper, we get a little blue light flash. And here's a bunch of steel coming in. I don't know, maybe that's other resources. Let's go over there and take a look. We gotta hop this belt. But once we hop that belt, we can come over here. Get out. Don't be, don't be resting in there. There you go. Yeah. See, there's that steel light flashing. And basically, the little trip wire right there, it just triggers that light to flash. Ooh, getting us lots of steel. Look at all that steel. All right, so that's how all the sorters work. But the sorters aren't on right now. That Because this is all part of the, the secondary wall. Because if we just turned all the sorters on, everything would fall on the belt underneath. We gotta do it in the right order. All right, gotta hop this belt. Now, the only thing that I didn't get done and it wasn't because of a time issue, it was because of a space issue. I didn't want to push this out any further because I didn't want to block the, you know, a, a nice little walkway there. Um, I would have liked to put in a purge system that would have emptied these ammunition plants after I was done using them. Don't mind that, that's just construction over there. Um, but I wasn't able, I'd, I'd need a bit more room up here to do that. And I just, I, I didn't want to make this factory too much bigger than it already was. So um, I, I did not do a purge system. So 
I have to come up here and manually clean out these three ammunition plants uh, when I'm done. But that's not that big of a deal. Alright, so let's take a look at the second half. We're going to make us some 45 ammunition. Alright, so now we come over here to this wall here. And the first thing we got to do, notice 10mm, 45, and 308 all have red lights. We, we can pick which one we want, but we can't pick more than one. Okay, so let's look at, we got three logic gates up here. One for each ammo type. So this is the 10mm and logic gate. The 45 caliber and logic gate. And the 308 and logic gate. So let's say we turn on our 45. See, now we got power to the delivery belt. And much like we turn on sort before we turn on pull, we have to turn on delivery belt before we turn on forges. Otherwise, crap starts piling up. Now watch this. If I turn this on as well, it turned off the power for the forge. We, and it turned off the power for delivery. You can only have one ammo type running at a time. See? Now this lit up, this lit up, everything's ready to go. All right, so let's let's start making some 45. Now, basically here's how these logic gates are working. Like I said, you got one logic gate for each different ammo type. And they, again, a logic gate requires power from this and that. So for the 10 millimeter, it requires power from this switch, right? and it requires power from the forge so the, see the forge wire goes up gets diverted it splits right here and it goes over to there it goes to there and it goes to there so basically each one of these gates is saying you need power from whatever ammo switch and the forge that's how that's working okay so there's no power on this on the output side because the forge isn't on yet and then these the outputs feed up to these four connectors up here and these four connectors hook to the four hoppers so that is copper and fertilizer and then lead and then steel so now it's pretty easy to see what components you need depending on what ammo type you want to build 10 millimeter requires fertilizer and lead 45 requires fertilizer and steel and 308 requires copper fertilizer and lead Pretty cool, huh? All right, so let's go ahead and fire up the delivery. That's gonna turn on our flashing green lights over here. I was gonna put in like some sort of buzzer when that was on, but I thought that'd get real annoying. So I skipped that part. And now if I turn on our forge, we see the no output there, output there, and no output there. So that means that we should have green lights on our hoppers for fertilizer and steel and we look over here and we sure do and we can see the fertilizer and the steel just falling out over there and now it's going upstairs so let's head back up there we can see all the magic so because we picked 45 this diverter flipped so now it's sending everything into this ammunition now someone well many people say that you can only run one type of ammunition at a type and you need a terminal to change the forge to change it into something else. Old Draco says that's a bunch of bullshit. He was doing some stuff with delay switches and interval switches a long time ago and he started talking a bunch of technical stuff. I wasn't real sure about it. But basically what he said is that if you take this off the power grid right put, put to its own generator and hook a terminal up to it it's all by itself you can program it and then when you plug it back in here it'll retain the memory of that previous programming so as long as you don't hook a terminal up in here and say hey ammo forge make uh make uh, uh 50 caliber then each one of these forges see this forge was programmed to just build 10 millimeter and then I plugged it in here this one was programmed to build 45 and then I plugged it in and this one was programmed to build 308 and then I plugged it in that is how you do it you can run multiple forges obviously you can't run them at the same time because your belt will only send to one forge at a time that's why you can't run multiple ammunition at the same time 
But yeah, that's how you run different ammo types. And I suppose with like a weapon forge, you'd be the same thing. You know, if you're running multiple forges, you just program them outside the system and then plug them into the system and you don't have to worry about them losing their memory. So that's pretty cool. All right, you can see this thing's kicking out ammo. It's kicking out 45 boxes of 45 rounds. Everything is working as it should. And of course I turned off the lights. Now let's take, just take a quick look at this place at night just because it is so pretty. I know, a factory pretty. Come on, Stu. What are you, kind of man be Woman, don't be coming up here. No, get away from that. You're not, you're not authorized to work on that. Get out of there. And stop triggering my lights, damn it. All right, I'm gonna come up here. I put me a bench up here so I could wait. What in the hell is going on over here? Apparently bowling balls, round objects, do not like to roll very well got all kinds of a backup. What is going on? It is paint. A dog bowl. That's what it was. It was a freaking dog bowl. Why is that all backing up in there? Give me a broom. Now stuff's coming out again. Man, that gets backed up in there too much more. It's that dog bowl. All right, dog bowls, no good. Where'd it go? Well, shit. <laughs> this is gonna be a mess here real quick, folks. Get up in there and now, oh, we'll go this way. Crap. No, can't go that way. You hit my head. There's something in there that's just... Alright, I'll clear that out later. Maybe if I just sit here for a second. Oh, look, it cleared itself out. There we go. Alright, let's take a look at this place real quick at nighttime. And I want to take a moment while we're uh, while we're sitting here to say check out my neighbors. There's a bunch of great builders build, building over here, and look for Loco Four Pack L O C O the number four P A C K. All one, no spaces or nothing. Do a search for him on YouTube if you haven't already. I may put a link uh, if I can remember in the description here, and uh, and look for his playlist because he adds a new playlist every week. So make sure to check out his playlist um, and he will uh, check out the other builders because they are some very talented folk and we need to give them some love too. Uh, yeah, this is a challenge, but it's not a contest. We're not competing against each other. There's no prize to be won. It's just, it's, you know, friendly fun uh, and it's a challenge for each one of us, but we're all building at the same place. That's the cool part of the challenge. So make sure to get over there and check them out. All right, so I just wanted to show you this real quick, what it all looks like so you can see the hoppers all light up real nice like. We see stuff falling on that belt. And we saw the blue lights before, but of course they stand out much better at nighttime. I guess we don't got nothing else feeding over there and the soldiers over there, that's all right. All right. This video has gone on quite a while, so we're gonna go ahead and go back stairs, back down stairs. Sweet Lord, Stu, use your words, man. All right, let's turn some lights on up in here. Oh, she done triggered that light. There we go. There we go. Get this place all lit up. All right, Wastelanders. That's going to do it for this factory tour. Oh, how much ammunition have we made? 270 rounds. And we got more coming down now. Isn't that nice? Make sure nothing fell on the ground. I hate to waste ammunition like that. You know, I, I was thinking that this may not be the most effective way to make ammunition. I could probably buy it cheaper. But when you're building an army, when you're building a military, 
you got to be able, you can't count on other people, you know, giving or, you know, getting your, your ammunition and stuff like that. You have to build it yourself. So uh, that's why we're doing this ammo factory here. 300 rounds. That's mighty nice right there. All right. Until next time, Wastelanders, you take care of yourselves out there. This is Stu Padasso for Draco Invictus saying this has been the greatest day in my life. See ya.